it's that video by Bob Smith. He's the one who ruined everything. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jim, and I want to tell you the story of how uh, Bob Smith destroyed my practice. So in 2017, the artist Bob and Roberta Smith was heading up this uh, large, mythy, ambitious project in Folkestone called Folkestone is an art school. I was working uh, as part of the faculty on a, on a part of that project. Another part of the project was a series of videos Bob made in which he kind of gave these weird art lessons, kind of laid out his pedagogy. And um, one of those videos in particular stuck with me. And in that video, Bob remade one of his earlier works, which was a concrete boat of about that size. And the idea was that it was absurd. Who would make a boat out of concrete? It's not the kind of material you want to use. It's not going to float. I remember watching Bob take that boat, put it in the water and the sea kind of begin to move it around, toss it about and it just wasn't floating. And there was uh, something joyous in that moment of seeing this boat almost as if it wanted to launch. It wanted to go out to sea because it's a boat what else is a boat supposed to do if not float and it just couldn't do it because of this inappropriate material the absurdity of that stuck with me and um i kind of expanded upon those ideas in a work i made in 2018 which was a cardboard canoe and that led on to more work and now i'm kind of making boats and things around boats exclusively kind of exploring more and more of the kind of metaphor and the things richness that i'm discovering out of making boats about making these objects uh which are activated through the action of using them and i'm obsessed with boats at the moment it's all bob smith's fault usually when you think about an artwork you know it's generated from this incommensurable set of circumstances and ideas that are, are drawn together to kind of bring forth the artwork and you can never track everything back to its source except in this case uh, one of the sources for my current practice is this video by bob and i can identify it quite clearly which is inappropriate that being the case why on earth haven't i made my own concrete boat yet so that's what we're going to do today I don't really want you to do this. <laughs> this would have gone a lot better if I'd scripted it. My studio slash my shed is near a road, so I apologize for any noise. This is my mold for casting concrete. Yes, it's made out of cardboard. Bob's is made out of cardboard as well. It's totally okay to use cardboard for your molds. However, consider that if you're using cardboard, it's going to be a destructive process getting your concrete out afterwards. And so this is a single use, one and done type scenario. I wanted to one up Bob, so I've gone for a giant mold. I'm going to pour some concrete. Then we're going to put this inside and then continue to pour concrete around the sides. And so we have an actual bowl-like boat shape. And maybe we could turn this into a planter afterwards, after we're done. Um, so that was my idea to one-up Bob. However, I did not buy enough concrete. I've only got one bag, so I'm never gonna fill this massive mold. So it's back to the drawing board. We're gonna have to make a much smaller mold. In video games, you, you get this term, emergent gameplay, and that's where the player is able to find some fun, some gamification through, um, through the systems, which isn't necessarily designed or placed or scripted. Um, and the great thing about emergent gameplay is its unpredictability, is not knowing what's going to happen. And I have that same kind of feeling when working in this way, where the planning that I've done is I'll get some cardboard. So 
So finding ways it can fit together. And literally the form emerging. That's where the fun is. Whilst concrete is setting, you've got time to do other stuff. You've got about 24 hours. So I went off and I went for a kayaking session. Um, I'm still learning and it was a pretty cool session. I learned quite a lot. I felt like I was getting much more confident on the water. So confident, in fact, that I figured I could get out of the kayak and onto the pontoon without spotter. So I gave it a try and I successfully got out of the kayak, but I did not successfully make it to the pontoon, which meant that I ended up in the canal and getting pretty wet and losing a wedding ring, which wasn't the best, uh, but never mind, it's a new day and our concrete has set. Those of you keeping track, my obsession with boats in my practice, which comes somewhat from Bob and Roberta Smith, is the reason why I'm learning to kayak. So in many ways, Bob Smith is responsible for this as well. And that's what I told my wife. Thank you. 